La Asamblea escuchará. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Rivo Rakotovao, President ad interim of the Republic of Madagascar. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. En nombre de la On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Rivo Rakotovao, President ad interim of the Republic of Madagascar, and to invite him to address the Assembly. You have the floor, Your Excellency. Madame la Présidente. President of the General Assembly, Secretary General, Heads of State and Government, Heads of Delegation, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. The fact that I have the privilege and honour to speak before this August Assembly today on behalf of the people of Madagascar is due to the fact that Madagascar has experienced a period of an exceptional democratic event which was hailed by a number of observers and seen as a true step forward in our democracy to echo the terms used at that time. I shall return to this matter later in my statement. Madam President, I sincerely congratulate you on your election. I am con confident that your determination will breathe new life into our collective efforts to consolidate our organization, to make it more credible for and closer to our peoples with real impacts on their daily lives, since that is its vocation. We have also heard your call and that of the Secretary General for the strengthening of multilateralism and international cooperation. In a difficult context of fragmentation, polarization, and inward-looking attitudes. Rest assured that Madagascar will support you actively throughout your mandate. Madam President, firmly committed to the values of unity, fraternity, and peace promoted by the United Nations, Madagascar, like all of us here, intends to strive to ensure that we work for the well-being of our peoples and to contribute to the most representative and democratic platform for discussion at a global level, that is, the United Nations General Assembly. All of the speakers who have spoken from this rostrum agreed on underscoring the great changes seen around the world. These are characterized by multipolarity and an economic globalization alongside dizzying levels of computerization of our society and abundant cultural diversity. Much progress has been made, but as underscored by our Secretary General, our world is suffering from a lack of confidence, from new challenges and from a very clear feeling of insecurity. Such feelings are exacerbated by the inequalities of development, the manifold and increasing but unchecked planetary challenges, such as climate change, terrorism, as well as the acute and unequally distributed poverty and disease. We are all witness to the humanitarian crises fueled by conflicts affecting millions of people leading to migratory crises, terrorist attacks, and threats to security within some regions, among other challenges. Madam President, the theme chosen for this session places us at the heart of the great issues of today's world. It calls on us to reflect on the role of our organization in the face of disruptions that are crippling today's societies. The challenge of sustainable development and the ambitious 2030 programme require a strong and efficient organisation garnering the commitment of all member states. The world is changing. It's evolving. 
it requires our organisation to adapt to ensure greater coherence in its approaches and its responses. Achieving the sustainable development goals is the best way not only to galvanise development but also to combat inequality and guarantee human rights in order to promote social inclusion, which is a sine qua non condition for lasting peace. This sustainable development to which we aspire means that we must protect the environment, which must be a priority if we hope to more effectively eliminate extreme poverty and ensure the long-term existence and viability of our planet. In this connection, I welcome the initiative of the Secretary-General to convene next year a summit on climate change. It is my hope that particular attention will be granted to developing countries, particularly to least developed countries and to small island states, so that they can adapt their economic development processes to the vicissitudes of the environment. Madam President, in the era through which we are living, it is essential to recognise the advocacy in favour of women and girls. We cannot close our eyes to the appalling conditions in which so many women live around the world, nor to all forms of gender-based violence. Women and girls are central to the future of humanity. Therefore, we must unanimously condemn injustice, modern slavery, human trafficking, and the worst forms of child labour which afflict women and girls in particular. Let us equip ourselves to improve the fate of humanity by caring for our mothers, our sisters and our daughters, with whom we must ensure that we fairly share our responsibilities. Moreover, it is crucial that we act in health around the world, which has an impact on our achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly in Africa. Madagascar has borne witness to this. We have faced numerous and difficult obstacles, including inter alia, improving access to treatment, medications, or in obtaining specific commitment from all communities, particularly in the area of prevention and investment. But with perseverance and with the support of our partners, a universal health coverage system has been implemented with the support of the entire United Nations family Madagascar was this year declared free of polio Madam President the 2030 agenda is a multi-sectoral program aimed at ensuring inclusive, equitable and sustainable development which must include all sectors of the population. Nonetheless, such a programme will remain dead letter if we do not earmark the necessary institutional and financial resources to galvanise the results we need. Here, Madagascar fully supports the reforms undertaken by the Secretary-General. These reforms are, of course, very ambitious, but we count on the proactive involvement of member states to ensure they are put in place. With regard to the resolution aimed at repositioning the United Nations development system in the context of the quadrennial comprehensive policy review of the United Nations development system, Madagascar welcomes the consensus which led to its adoption in May this year and hails the reforms undertaken within country teams and of the role of resident coordinators within the United Nations. This resolution charts the path to follow so that with full consultation and a common agreement with governments, the system is more swiftly aligned with the 2030 Programme for Sustainable Development. This will ensure that we better reflect the realities, needs and priorities of Member States so that the implementation of the 2030 Agenda truly benefits our populations. In this connection, 
the drivers of Madagascar's development process for the achievement of the SDGs were identified through our MAPS mission, which is Mainstreaming Acceleration and Policy Support, at the end of April. The third general population and habitat census has also just been completed in Madagascar thanks to the support of the United Nations and other partners such as the European Union. The results will be very important in shedding light on changes to our population and on the development of the implementation, follow-up and assessment of the SDGs. They will be taken into account as we prepare our National Development Plan 2020-2024. Madam President, the United Nations aims to maintain sustainable, lasting peace for development around the world. The considerable and praiseworthy achievements that we have seen show how far we have come, but we must admit that much remains to be done. In light of the persistent challenges and unmet aspirations, a world of peace and prosperity cannot be built by the isolated work of one organization or some individuals or some communities or groups of states. It requires the implementation of convergent and consensual actions that are decided on by the aspirations of all of us. While generally recognized at a global level, democratic governance remains one of the contemporary political concepts which has not been adopted unanimously by all nations. The Malagasy people has always been particularly interested in partnerships to protect our democratic achievements. We have always been convinced that democratic progress is a guarantee of the essential stability for our development and is a precondition for any international cooperation. We are reminded of this as we look at the current important stage in the history of our country. In its ongoing quest for a mature democracy, Madagascar is today at a crossroads. Indeed, our constitution required that the presidential term be shortened by several months if the incumbent president were to stand for re-election. That is why, in a pure illustration of republican spirit, the president of the Malagasy people, democratically elected in 2013, His Excellency Mr. Harry Rajaona Rina Pianina, submitted his resignation on the 7th of September last, in so, in so doing, respecting a constitutional provision which may be atypical but which was demanded by the Malagasy people at a particular moment in its history. For the first time, the constitutional provisions stipulating the transfer of presidential powers to the President of the Senate were implemented without resort to any other process. The President of the Senate will now be responsible for guaranteeing the continuity of the state and the regular operations of public services until the arrival of the new President of the Republic, whose investiture is planned for the 25th of January 2019, if there is a second round of our elections, in full observance, of course, of the ongoing electoral process. Here we note that Madagascar is not in a phase of political transition in the usual sense whereby political divisions lead to the suspension of the constitution. On the contrary, in our case, we have simply submitted to this expression of the will of the sovereign people enshrined in our constitution. This situation is part and parcel of the continuance of political life in our country, which will be marked by a brief stage provided by the fundamental sovereign law itself. No nation is born democratic, said the late Kofi Annan. The period that we are living through today in our country shows that we have the determination to build progress in democracy. In parallel to this key phase in our democracy, which is underpinned by 
a will for peace and to maintain political stability at all price. For the last four years, we have been able to re-establish macroeconomic balance. We have seen positive changes in our fundamental p uh, measures. We have re-established confidence and relations between international and national stakeholders. And this year we expect the our economic growth to exceed 5%, which is the best performance in 10 years. In agriculture, we have seen great increases of 80% in production and productivity, particularly of rice, thanks to public and private investment in hydro-agricultural infrastructure and in research. In energy, Madagascar is experiencing an energy transition, and we have seen considerable increases in the use of clean energy and renewable energies, particularly through hydro and solar power plants. Just to quote the examples of the facilities that have been provided to the populations Ambato of Ambatolampi in Madagascar and Ambo Hini Ponana in June. I'm particularly proud to be able to say that this is the largest plant of its type in the Indian Ocean and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Madagascar can expect to see a fall in its electricity costs by 2020 thanks to this type of project, despite the increase in the oil price on the international market. Our exports have also been performing well, and our foreign exchange markets have been taken under control. Inflation should be brought down to 7% by the end of the year. In the social sector, education and healthcare have been improved. Since 2014 to date, we have built 24 centres to speed up the reduction of maternal and infant mortality. 315 basic health centres as well have been built. We have a national radiotherapy centre, which will soon be completed to treat cancers. We have also implemented 30 operational operations units in deprived regions. In education, since 2015, we've seen the recruitment of 44,000 new teachers, which represents an increase of 30% in our total workforce of teachers. We've also been building 1,087 classrooms, and we've been able to provide meals to 354,106 students through our school canteens. The same improvements have been seen in tourism, infrastructure of our airports, and in other facilities. In good governance, we have adopted several laws to counter corruption and the illegal trafficking of our resources. We are implementing a structural reform to counter corruption. All of this information is provision of further indicators of our stability and of clear growth, which should be sustained and consolidated. But despite all of these efforts, and despite its abundant potential, Madagascar is still facing difficulties. We are aware of the need for stability, which is a guarantee of development. Our country cannot be taken hostage by a political crisis. Our country and our people understood this. Our country has suffered so much. And the example, therefore, needed to be given from on high. That is why His Excellency Mr. Harry Rajarani Penina, President of the Republic, was so willing to observe our constitutional provisions in presenting his resignation. Madagascar would therefore ask that all of its development partners provide their support to our current electoral process. We take this opportunity to reiterate our call so that we can ensure effective synergies within our organisations to promote a better future to which all nations aspire. Madam President, before closing, I wish to join the previous speakers in paying tribute to a dignified son of our continent, our former Secretary General, Kofi Atta Anan. Strengthened with his convictions, this fervent defender of multilateralism strived to rethink and build a stronger organization which was better able to relieve the suffering of people around the world on behalf of humanity. 
He will undoubtedly remain a source of inspiration for all of humanity. I close by recalling that this year marks the 70th anniversary of the adoption of humanity's most faithful instrument, which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. May this instrument continue to inspire and guide us in the struggles that we continue to fight to achieve a new human global order where no one is ever left behind. Thank you very much for your kind attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency Rivo Rakotovao, President ad interim of the Republic of Madagascar, for the statement that he has just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the Head of State.